I'm Susan Doherty with Flanagan Springs Kennel in Winchester, Kentucky. So we're breeding the, the Ryman type English setter and that can have a variety of meanings to us. What the, the Ryman type setter is, is a close working English setter um, that's very affectionate. They were bred to be in the field two months of the year and in the home 10 months of the year. So, so both aspects are very important to us. All through my life I've raised dogs, but I never found one that I was interested enough in to really try and make a difference in it. And when we ran into Ryman's, Ryman's were really suffering from hip dysplasia and deafness and other maladies that in my genetic background I knew could be fixed pretty easily that they would probably be um, recessives and as long as you're careful who you breed to you can breed around them. I think this dog makes sense for anybody that wants a family oriented dog. They're wonderful in the home. You know, they were bred to be in the home 10 months of the year, but also a close working dog in the field. So I'm getting older. I can't keep up with the dogs, you know? So, um, so it's wonderful for us to have a dog that's always in eyesight, sort of quartering back and forth. Um, but they're wonderful family dogs. So one of the things that we have done that I think makes our dogs stand out is when we have gone into and bred, outcrossed, or purchased from the bench world, we have concentrated on dogs that have dual champions in their lineage. The latest dual champion that we bred to and the puppies that we produced have four dual champions in four generations. And we're, we're really proud of that and excited to see what the future holds with these offspring. In the history of the English Setter, I think now there are maybe 19 or 20 dual champions, but that's in 160 years of English Setter history. What a dual champion is, is a dog that is a champion in the show ring and a champion in the field. So what we're looking for are is to get a dog that's close to the breed standards as possible and um, works efficiently and effectively in the field. Well, I've had setters all my life, uh, Irish, in English, and Gordon, all three, and obviously uh, English setters are my favorite now. So, And I've had a real interest in uh, good-looking dogs that get close to the breed standard and also have the ability to uh, great dispositions and the ability to, to hunt still. When my last dog passed away, I, I had uh, done a, a Google search just for dual type English setters and their, uh, their name came up and whatever and I started investigating their web page and then talked with uh, Brock and Susan both and I think the stars kind of aligned. It seemed like we had a similar philosophy and they were producing something that uh, was right, right in line with what I had wanted to do. So. That's where I got my dog Josie from, and uh, I, I told Brock when I got her, I said, we're going to really do things. So she's actually, you know, she's got multiple obedience uh, titles, and uh, she's been in the show ring as well as uh, you know, going through all the junior, senior, and master AKC hunt tests. And she's a canine good citizen and has a, a excellence awards from the English Setter Association of America. So. She's kind of been a versatile dog and I guess one of their poster child. <laughs> I, I grew up hunting. This is, I'm 33 years old and I've been uh, bird hunting since I was 13. And of course I love that, but something that is so cool about these dogs is first and foremost, they are your companion. Um, but you do a, give a little bit of work with them and let their natural abilities come out, then it's like a flip of the switch. They go from, they they turn off the, uh, they, not that not necessarily that they turn off the switch of being a family dog, but you get them out in the field and they're, they're they know what they're supposed to do. And um, that, uh, 
uh, just like my dogs, as soon as they know whenever I'm pulling out their hunting collars and their hunting vests, they're excited because they know everything that they're about to do and they're, they're the first ones inside the truck to go out to the hunting field because they know what they're about to get to do. But as soon as we make them back to the truck, it's back to it's back to laying around and just chilling out and uh, being there with you. We we we've been out here. Uh, this has become kind of an annual event, a, a hunt for the sage grouse uh, in southwestern Wyoming. Uh, we're sort of in the close to the area of the Wind Rivers area. Sort of a it's sort of the hot spot for uh, good huntable populations of the species, which is in trouble elsewhere. It's been, it's been fun every year. Uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful country. And uh, uh, yeah, there's not, it's words are, it's hard to describe. It's, it's a really calm, peaceful place and people, everybody that's come here with me has fallen in love with the area, just for the area itself, not just for the bird hunting. One of the most rewarding things that we get from these dogs is the relationships and the camaraderie that we have with people all across the country. We're, we're sitting in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming because we love it so much here. And it's a wonderful place to work the dogs. And we have people here joining us from South Carolina, California, Utah, Ohio, Kentucky. Um, and they've all come here because of the love of the dogs and they, they love the family of people and dogs that we have developed here. And that's the thing I'm the most proud of is the relationships that we have with all of our owners. Just for instance, here in Wyoming, uh, at, at this campsite, there's probably about 12 or 13 humans to about 15 or 16 Flanagan Springs English Setters. And around the campsite, exactly what my girls are doing, they're hanging out next to, that, ne hanging out next to their particular companion. This is, this is them in majority of their setting but tomorrow morning whenever i load up and we have the shotguns ready and i pull out their hunting collars and all of their gear the dogs are stoked because they know that we're going from hanging out and chilling out to it's time to hunt and we're going to go find some birds and uh, go do what we were bred to do years ago what we have done we took a dog that we loved we were able to fine tune it into exactly what we were looking for. And then we started putting out our, our young and it was tough. Um, you know, we love every dog that's come through our kennel and that is the tough part is to say goodbye at nine, 10, 11 weeks, you know, somewhere in there. And you see them again over the years. We have created in our minds, and I think in every other people who have our dogs' minds, it's a family. And um, not just us, but people who have come to us for dogs, they have contact with someone who might live a thousand miles away, and they might talk every week on on a subject. I mean, it has been the most rewarding thing to see people from completely different walks of life, completely different wants in the animal, be able to come to us and we can satisfy their wants. And that's, that's what Susan's done. I've done the genetic part, but Susan has done the family part, no doubt. And it's gratifying to me that I can figure out one side of the equation, she figures out the other, and we make this, which is a culmination of 25 years, not just of breeding dogs, but making family members. And um, this is something that we have been doing in Minnesota for years. And we've gotten people from the eastern part of the U.S. And this has pulled people from South Carolina to California, from the south to the north. It's, it's, it's gratifying. I mean, it, it's hard. I'm emotional about it. It's hard for me to 
to believe that so many people could touch us and we could touch them.